Can I just start by extending a very warm welcome to all of you who've chosen to come here tonight on this very important evening for the City of Leeds. Um, you're very welcome um, to this spectacular space um, that we've created in the um, museum here. Um, so, as you're all aware, this is the official launch of the Leeds Climate Commission. And I'm sure you're aware that we have a busy programme for you this evening. And I hope you'll all go away um, completely inspired um, and um, really ready to commit to joining with us on um, what I think is going to be a really incredible journey. One that I have to say that people from around the region, around the country, and actually on an international stage are looking at very closely. I'm going to introduce the speakers to you in a little while, but I do just want to um, say a few words on behalf of Leeds City Council, and particularly I hope to convey a very strong message from the Council about why we are so excited to be a key partner in the Commission going forward. I think um, all of us can say that um, we've never really lived through times quite like this. And looking back over only just a few months, um, you really couldn't have written some of the things that have happened. Um, but I, I think many of us are here tonight convinced that climate change is happening and the terrible pictures that we're seeing on our screens at the moment in the Caribbean um, only add to the distress that we feel in terms of the impact on so many people around the globe. It's a classic wicked problem, if you like. It's complex, systemic, with lots of elements and not something that any of us can tackle alone by ourselves. And I just want to quote um, Professor Chris Huxham, an academic from Strathclyde University, who coined the phrase collaborative advantage. Collaborative advantage, she said, will be achieved when something unusually creative is produced. Perhaps an objective is met that no organisation could have produced on its own. And when each organisation, through the collaboration, is able to achieve its own objectives better than it could alone. In some cases, it should also be possible to achieve some higher level objectives for society as a whole, rather than just the participating organisations. So I think it's that collaborative advantage that we're all here to learn about tonight. You, not only are we making things better for our own organisations, but actually we're here to contribute to the greater good, not only of our own communities, but also on a far wider scale across the planet. There are so many of us looking for solutions to the problems that we face. Definitely sustainable development territory in its truest terms. And collaboration is, of course, at the heart of everything we're trying to do in Leeds. And I hope many of you are aware of the work that we're doing to make Leeds a truly compassionate city. Leeds is a great, resilient city with fantastic people. And we are determined that Leeds will be the best place it possibly can, can be. So we're talking about creating a compassionate city with a strong economy that everyone is able to share in and benefit from. We used to talk about um, death by partnership. I'm sure many of you remember, um, you know, just the challenges that we faced when we first set out on this agenda. Collaboration is hard. It is not always easy. 
there is an element of uncertainty built in and it means as well, crucially, sharing control. It depends on willing collaborators who all want the same or complementary outcomes and sometimes we find mismatched heroes all setting out on a journey together. So if we start by recognising it isn't going to be easy, I think we all know that if tackling climate change was easy, we would be much further down the track than we are today. But we know the benefit is worth the effort we are all going to have to put together. We have a long and strong track record of working with city um, stakeholders on the climate, on climate change, on sustainable development. And before this initiative was launched um, a few years ago, we had the designation of Environment City, one that was only given, I think, to four cities across the UK. And I was very privileged to chair Environment City for a number of years. But I was delighted when the University of Leeds set out with the study in 2011-12 to really look at how we could make a strategic business case for investment and commercial commercialization of low carbon projects. This became known, as many of you will know, as the Leeds Mini Stern, following Lord Stern's national report, which concluded that the benefits of strong early action on climate change outweigh the cost. A lot of projects were stimulated as a result and we are still working through some of those today. I think we all know that more needs to be done and I'm delighted to be here today at the launch of the Leeds Climate Commission um, as a result of the discussions that followed from some of this earlier work. So the purpose of the Commission will be to promote leadership in the city on climate change, encouraging stakeholders to take effective action now while maintaining a longer term perspective. I really believe the Commission will provide the authoritative independent advice on the most effective steps required to meet the city's carbon reduction targets. And I hope you all realise just how ambitious we are in Leeds around those targets. We need um, all of that evidence to inform policies and actions um, to um, make sure that we get local stakeholders and decision makers taking the necessary actions. We also expect the Commission to advise on the assessments of climate related risks and adaptation opportunities in the city and on progress towards climate resilience. So, um, a bit of a tall order, but we're expecting the Leeds Climate Commission to provide the solid evidence base for the city on the best way that all of us can respond to the challenges that we face. The Commission will report to the city and the Council will respond to its recommendations and encourage others to do likewise. We are very fortunate in Leeds to have the University of Leeds and Leeds Beckett University who are recognised world leaders in this field. And I'm delighted that the Council is actively creating an environment of innovation, a living laboratory so that our academic partners can develop and implement the latest research and ideas. I believe that Leeds is leading again on how a city can come together to collectively respond to the challenge and the opportunities that climate change presents. I would like to take this opportunity to formally thank the University of Leeds and in particular Professor Andy Goldson and his team who have demonstrated what genuine collaboration can achieve. They have dedicated significant resources, led the way in securing fin financial support for the Commission, marshalled student projects and arranged this gathering today. I'm sure their research will provide the evidence for the challenging decisions that lie ahead. Um, and on behalf of us all here, Andy, thank you.
I would like to just finish uh, by saying a few words about the role of cities and local authorities. In my role as chair of core cities, I am constantly impressed by the innovations happening in all of the cities across the country. Together, we are demonstrating to our national leaders that we know our communities, we understand the challenges facing us, and with the correct mix of local powers and resources, we can deliver the high quality communities that will allow our cities and neighborhoods to thrive. Our energy system is changing from a centralized system to one where local technologies are becoming more important. Local authorities are playing a, a more prominent role in local energy. As you're aware, many cities, including Leeds, are actively pursuing district heating systems and renewable energy projects. We are also actively investigating the potential for Leeds to become the first city in the United Kingdom to switch to 100% hydrogen with support from Northern Gas Network. Local authorities and other city partners have a crucial role to play in the future of energy. Through our role as trusted local leaders, energy procurers, asset and vehicle fleet owners, stimulating regeneration, guiding the planning of new development, housing providers and managing local highways. So I would urge all of the city and local authority representatives here this evening to join Leeds in the network of cities coming together to prove that we have the ability to make the change we need to change. And I believe cities have a major role to play in the climate change agenda. We are also responsible for around 30% of carbon emissions, home to more than 16 million people. We contribute massively, I'm afraid, to the causes of climate change, but we also can provide the solutions. Sustainable, clean energy systems are not easy to deliver, but if we move forward, I believe that we can seek the uh, progress we need. And of course, energy is just one component of the work we need to do. Strong, inclusive communities, innovative, enhancing the natural environment, resource efficient, providing high levels of well-being, and in Leeds's case, a compassionate city able to adapt to the challenges of the 21st century and beyond. And I would just like to emphasize our approach in Leeds is to put people first. This is about quality of life for the people who live here in Leeds and in the wider region and beyond. So thank you again for giving your time to come to this important gathering this evening. Um, before we go on to the other presenters this evening, I would like um, to um, show you, I, I have, I'm assuming the technology is all ready and set to go, um, an introduction um, to the um, website and the, the th by doing so, formally launch the Leeds Climate Commission. Thank you.